Hey Bulls fans, Adam Mary here with another batch of Bulls unboxings. Today we are going to be looking at the new Locust Heavy Destroyer. We are going to be looking at the new Canoptic Doomstalker. And we're going to be looking at the new Silent King. And I am super jazzed about all three of these models. So let's get started. First up, we're going to take a look at the Heavy Destroyer. The new Locust Heavy Destroyer. This does replace the old Destroyer models pretty much on a one-to-one -one basis here. And uh, yeah, I'm excited about this one. So uh, let me pop the box real quick. Let's see what we have inside. There's the back of the box. It does come with two different weapon options here, as you can see. Uh, and you kind of pick the variant. And it's, it's pretty straight up. It's got one sprue, uh, one base, and uh, instructions. So here's the sprue and instructions. We'll flip this over, take a look real quick. It's a fold out, so how to assemble everything. And then uh, you basically pick which weapon option you want. Uh, a little spoiler too, I've actually assembled this model. I want to talk about a couple of pain points when you're assembling this model to be aware of. It's kind of a pain in the butt. The first one is step six. So when you are assembling the torso, these three parts here, they have a lot of really cool undercuts on this model. Uh, I just want you to be aware. Make sure that when you assemble this part, let it let it all set correctly and dry first because it will make the rest of the assembly better. Uh, just because you are you basically take side A or the, the back side and then the front side and you're gonna, you're gonna glue them together or you're gonna glue the arms in there and then you're gonna glue the front part. So the, the back side is gonna go together. But then when you do that, you gotta make sure that they line up with this little peg there except when you're gluing stuff get together you can't tell if the peg is snug enough it was a pain in the butt okay <laughs> i built the model i've built hundreds of games workshop models at this point this little peg thing with the gluing together and making it sit it was straight up annoying um but if you do it right it should sit correctly and then you won't worry about the torso uh when you glue the gun on there being at the wrong angle and whatever i'm just saying I love these kits 99% of the time. This was like the 1% time where I was really kind of frustrated uh, building this kit. It was very fiddly. Uh, there's also some stuff going on with the uh, the neck part here, bit 29. If you don't line everything up correctly, if it's not snug when you attach the head, that can cause some problems on the model. Take it from me. Take your time on this part. Let everything dry and set correctly. It was a pain in the butt. But other than that, I really like the model. It's one of my favorite by far, one of the, one of the favorite new Necron kits. So there is the sprue. Here's, I'm gonna move the base. Base is pretty big, as you can see there. Uh, lots of detail here. Don't know what else to say about it. Uh, it's, other than the little uh, vertebrae torso connection there, it was, it was a fun kit to build. Uh, again, I like the gun. It actually went together really easy. Uh, I don't miss the glowy glowy pipes like some people do sorry i just wasn't ever a big fan of the, the glowy plastic and uh just you know in case you were wondering i did actually build it so i wasn't making that up um went together like i said mostly mostly good um it's a cool model it's not as big as i thought it was gonna be and uh for for all of our thousands of points of necrons we have in our studio army we actually don't have any destroyers which it's kind of weird so i grabbed a warrior uh just so you can kind of see it to scale here there's one of the older warriors on a 25 millimeter base uh just to kind of give you an idea of the size of this thing so um yeah just to kind of give you an idea of the scale of it yeah moving on next up is the canoptic doom stalker uh this was another fun kit to put together well, it was it was a fun kit to build. Uh, it was actually the fastest of the three kits to build. You'll see why here in a second. And uh, as as complicated as this model looks, I gotta give props to GW because it's only on like two sprues. So there's the first one. There's the base. Here's the second sprue. And then the instructions. You'll see how easy this one was to build too, because look at that, it's literally like one page of instructions. Uh, it goes together like a champ. It's basically two sections 
where you've got the upper torso with the big cannon and then the lower part with the legs. And the legs go together super easy uh, and very, very, it's a very, very stable kit. So um, as far as being top heavy, I, I wasn't too concerned about that. But there are the sprues, uh, super detailed again, went together, no problem. It's basically kind of a mirror. Uh, it went together like a, like a dream. I, I don't have any complaints about this one. So uh, in case you were wondering, I, I, I built one. Um, and to give you a comparison too, here's the reanimator from the Indominus box set. So again, size comparison wise, kind of get in here. Much bigger base for starters, much bigger uh, canopy up top, as you can see. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about that one. But uh, it's similar in form. These are not the same kit at all. So the the Doomstalker is different from the Reanimator. So I just want to make that very clear. Uh, very different model. One thing I did do uh, just for later, for whoever paints this thing, because it might be me. I don't know if we're going to get this painted up for a few years. It does have that cool peg there. Uh, you don't have to glue this down all the way like I did just for ease of transport. And then this is kind of its own thing. Uh, I'm sure some kit basher out there is going to turn this into some kind of floaty android thing for Necrons. Uh, and you can kind of reposition that however you want, just because it's a peg and you can you can do that. So, it's just kind of, boom. As long as the things, you know, it can move. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. When you get it, it'll be your model. You can do what you want. Happy little trees. Bob Ross style. And, of course, we have Sarket the Silent King. I guess that's how you say it. It's, I'm just going to call him the Silent King, all right? Uh, this model's rad. <laughs> uh, this was, was a challenge. It was a hobby challenge uh, to put together, but it was a good challenge, and I enjoyed it quite a bit, putting it together. Um, the painting challenge is going to be intimidating, I'm not going to lie, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm down to try. I'm down to try. We'll, we'll see how that goes later. Uh yeah anyway let me open this up i did build it we'll show it off here in a second but uh instruction is way more in depth than the previous two kits it's a multi-page thing the first half is essentially the assembly of the throne which is way sturdier than you might think because of this bit right here uh we'll show that off but it's essentially two bits that you glue together that go on the bottom of the base of the little thing that it walked of it of it floats on of the throne there and then it keeps it super sturdy so you end up with this platform very sturdy uh wasn't worried about that wobbling at all i was actually really pleased with that um then you go on and build the top half of it pretty easy then you get to the little dudes <laughs> uh i'll be honest this part was very fiddly once you get past uh the silent king himself and start working on his his trial triarchal uh, pharaons they these were kind of annoying uh to put together the parts that were the most annoying had to be the arms if you look they're basically mirrored i don't want to zoom in real fast you have to as uh, assemble the the stat the staves the staffs with the uh a thumb arm like it's it's a it's a neat way they did the undercut i thought it was a neat way but it i'll be honest it was pretty annoying uh to let that sit and dry and then like it just didn't want to stay when you when you when you glued it so if you have some like if you're using like super glue i definitely recommend some zip kicker to make sure it's locked in place if you're using modeling glue like i did with the like plastic fusion stuff uh it's it's tedious <laughs> uh it will like if your glue is new or fresh or whatever it, it sometimes it'll hold really quickly um a little dab will do you a little dab goes a long way but the, the second annoying part was this step here, when you when you basically take the front half of the torsos after you've assembled the arms and then glue the back. And then there's these little tabard things that go uh, in the crotch area. <laughs> that was fine. That, that was that wasn't the problem. It was it was attaching the, the front to the back. Uh, if you if you had any kind of loose or in inaccurate assembly options, it, it made this this step right here. Uh, somewhat frustrating but i basically built the throne in about two hours and then the rest of these guys 
clipping, cleaning, and getting them assembled took me another like hour and a half. So, and I do pride myself on assembling models. That's one of the things I do fairly well. So, uh, this was a treat. Yeah, those go together super quick. So, nothing there. No, no complaints there. Just watch out when you're assembling the little dudes. They're a little, little tedious, but it's worth it. Uh, the, the sprues, I'm sure you're all excited about these. And then you get the base, and these are for the uh, minier things. So there's the base. But uh, I'm sure you're curious about the sprues. You basically get two copies of this sprue. And one copy, this is like, one of the cool things when I was assembling this is because I knew the basic rundown that was going to be like a bunch of mirrored things and uh, uh, a bunch of unique stuff. If, if, if you were assembling it and the bit only had one bit, you could look here and it was basically on this sprue. And then when you were like, oh, this there's multiples of this, then you knew that they were gonna be in the same spot on these two sprues. I'm gonna move the spare to the side. So it was assembly wise, again, building the thing was pretty easy, um, except for the dudes, they were a little tedious, but it was fun. It was a fun hobby project, I gotta say. Um, painting is definitely gonna be a hobby challenge. But I'm looking forward to it. If I end up painting this thing, I, I don't know if we're gonna get it to the to our studio paint painter or not. But I'm I'm down. I might tackle this one myself. And in case you were wondering, I did build it, um, and I have some tips. More tips. More tips. So real quick, I wanted to show this off. These guys are not glued down because I want to paint them. Well, if I'm the one that paints them, I will appreciate it. So let me move the cape real quick. The cape tipped over so uh, obviously you've got the silent king he is much larger in stature than his praetorian there and then this is the cape the cape actually stands up if you do it right um and then i've got a guy in here uh he's not glued in you can pull him out they stand up on their own which is kind of cool let me just show off the throne real fast because i feel like this is this is pretty rad again very stable because of this bit down in here it's, it's a little wobbly, but you can do that. Um, matter of fact, I can glue these little things down even more to make them even more stable. But I liked the throne. There's a ton of detail. You can see all the stuff in there. If you glued the models down, painting that would be a nightmare. So um, I wanna at least get a base coat down before I do any gluing of the actual uh, uh, dudes on here. But it was a really cool kit. There's the back. I know a lot of folks are probably curious about what the back of the thing looked like. It's got like, these three little engines and then little pylons going on. Uh, and then of course the top half has the uh, the Satan shard there getting powering, I guess. I don't know. It's got black stone all over the place. It's such a cool build. This part in here is actually multiple parts you, you connect together. That's another one of those slightly frustrating things, but uh, have fun, you know? <laughs> Once you do this little little band of things, it's, it's not that bad. <laughs> the stairs were neat too. You actually, uh, it's it's again mirrored so you take two steps make sure that the uh, inseam there is like super flush and then you can put the glue uh, like plastic glue in there and they should stick together really well but it was a fun build for the this part here those guys so these guys actually uh, if you look here they've got three little plugs and they do kind of fit in here you position them correctly but there's like three plugs and they will fit, but there you go. I'm kind of zoom in here. Again, it, it moved. <laughs> but there you go. So they'll 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 literally plug into place, which is kind of cool. You can do that for this guy too. Hopefully. So. Uh, Goes in there. And then the cape will go position on this back part, like so. And then the silent king will be put in the middle there. Again, nothing's glued down, and he actually is a little wants to do a front flip for some reason. So, but you get the idea. Whoops. He he made it safe. It's okay. It's a really cool kit, though. Overall, I was really impressed with it. A lot of fun to build. But that is the uh, the Silent King kit. Well, there you go, folks. That was the uh, Locust Heavy Destroyer, the Canoptic Doomstalker, and, of course, the Silent King. The new kits from Games Workshop for the new Necron line. 
Really excited overall about the Necron models and, and hobby challenges here for you. Uh, if you typically build Space Marines uh, and are familiar with Games Workshop stuff, I would say these kits are a bit more challenging than Space Marines, um, just because there's a lot more fiddly stuff in there. And uh, uh, if you're looking to up your hobby game, I would definitely give one of these kits a shot. Uh, this one was by far the easiest to build. It still looks fantastic. Uh, yeah, overall, and this this is just going to be probably like display board, army centerpiece, you know, painting challenge type thing. So, recommend all these kids go check them out. That has been uh, it from us here at Bulls. I am Adam Harry. Thank you for watching. <laughs>